This afternoon's number is 66%. That's the portion of people who are going to be buying products rather than experiences this year. That's according to a recent survey from the Swedish bank Klarna. Now, in recent years, we've heard so much about the rise of experiences. Young people, especially millennials, moving away from buying things and instead spending their money on experiences, things like dinners, vacations, and more. But the pandemic has thrown a wrench in that, so it's a return to things, at least for this year. The Klarna survey also found that 41% of shoppers aren't going are gonna, to aren't gonna hit the road this year for the holiday season. And then 75% of those who are not going to be traveling are going to be using that travel money toward gift purchases instead. So that leaves retailers with their biggest stress test yet. Curbside pickup and deliveries have become the norm for 2020, but these alternatives haven't seen demand like holiday season until now. Joining me to talk about what peak season may look like is U.S. luxury reporter Kim Bassine with Bloomberg News, live from New York in our studios. Kim, it's so great to see you. Um, what's at stake for retailers this year? Well, it's been a terrible year for retailers, right? So uh, at least uh, $100 billion in, in sales have just evaporated this year because of the, the pandemic. If you recall, back in March and April and into May, uh, stores were closed. They were closed for a really long time. Losing six, eight weeks of, of in-store sales is, in, is unprecedented and, and quite incredible. So they're still recovering from that now. And, and at the same time, we have shifted the way that we're shopping. We're not going to stores the same way that we used to. We're buying more when we do. And of course, we're buying more online. I, I found one element of your article so fascinating was this idea that retailers have to get curbside pickup right the first time or else they risk alienating the consumer for life. Take me into that. Not only are we buying more online, we're buying more of different things online. So we've always you know, replenished our toothpaste or, or toilet paper when, we, when it was available. <laughs> uh, I still can't get any we've toilet always paper just on gone Amazon. online to get our like, Tide Pods and things yeah. like that. But, but now we're seeing uh, increasing sales in like luxury items too, so jewelry. People are buying high-end jewelry online because uh, for a long time they couldn't go to... It's really training hmm. shoppers to buy more different things uh, through e-commerce. So Black Friday traditionally for retailers has, has been, the, the challenge has been making sure that they have the hours, they have the staff, and they have what's in stock. That's not the case this year. That's not. And lay, lay out what they're doing to because adjust. Because in the past, you, we know Black Friday. It's like the it's the day of the door buster, right? You have the big lines outside. People are, people are knocking on the glass in order to get in to get the, their big screen TV or whatever it is the, the big sale is that day. Black Friday is not going to go down like that in 2020 uh, because of COVID restrictions and because they're spacing out these promotions uh, over the course of the season so as not to attract too many people during that, that particular time. So, so how are they going to pull it off? I mean, are they hiring staff? Are they using distribution centers in a different way? Are they trying to encourage people like some retailers to actually go to stores rather than order stuff online? Because they're, they're going to be tested in a big way. They're, they're doing all those things. So. Uh, online pickup in st uh, ordering online and picking up in store they call it bopus it's a terrible name for that thing uh, is <laughs> is going to be super popular this season so uh, CEOs are encouraging people to do it that way rather than go straight to the store curbside pickup is huge and these are all things that have been recently either rolled out or scaled up by these retailers and it's going to be a stress test to see if they can handle all this extra uh, all these extra people. Yeah, the, the big the big names, the big retailers, the S&P 500 companies, they certainly have the resources or at least more resources to make this work. I won't say they have all the resources because certainly some of those have been struggling. What about the mom and pop shops? How are they adjusting to fewer people coming in in person and instead people shopping this way? I mean, they're always at a logistical disadvantage, and this year it's going to be even worse because they, they, they do not have the resources to put these things in place. So it's really going to end up on the, the shopper, the customers. It, if you want to support your local stores, they're going to need it more than ever this holiday season. Yeah, it's going to be a little harder this year to do it than it was in, in previous years. So, so fast forward to you know, a year from now. What's the conversation that you and I are, are having in a year? What does retail look like on the other side of this? We're trying to see how, uh, how, how these stores recover. Now, if you look at the traffic numbers for people going physically to stores, they still haven't rebounded all the way. You'll see they went down almost 100% when everything was closed, and they recovered about halfway back. And they've stayed that way since June or July. 
Wow. And they just ha- it just stalled at that point. Now, is that permanent? Is that a forever thing? Uh, it may be, or it may be somewhere in between. So we might have seen a permanent shift in the way that consumers are buying. And even if there is a vaccine, and when there is a when there's a vaccine, I should say, um, we might not see it ever return to pre-pandemic levels. We might not. It's it's wow. it's still unclear. But uh, everyone's also investing. In, in digital right now, uh, better ways to, to get shoppers their products like shipping from stores to your home. So uh, it's, it's more convenient for everyone if they ship it directly from whatever store is closest to you instead of the distribution center for the region further away. Uh, curbside is going to continue. In-store pickup is going to continue. Uh, there will be more warehouses closer to people so they can get you stuff faster. Uh, it, that trend is just going to keep going. One thing I've been thinking a lot about over the last few months when it comes to retailers is this idea of, of winners and losers. And we're really seeing that play out in industry across industry right now. What are some of the names that are, are going to come out on the other side stronger? than they were before the pandemic, and the flip side of that, come out weaker than they were. Uh, the general merchandise retailers have done a, uh, an incredible job throughout this this pandemic. That's you know Walmart, Amazon. They've had a, uh, they've stayed been able to stay open because they weren't shut down because they were considered essential right. retailers, uh, and they had all the back end uh, logistical th- that spine to keep everything together and keep their th- the motor running throughout the throughout the past several months. Um, department stores have struggled to recover, and that's that was always going to happen. <laughs> they, they they were in trouble before and they still are now. U.S. luxury reporter Kim Basine from Bloomberg News. Kim, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining us on Quick Take this afternoon. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.